All right, hello everybody. This is Miss Bo, and today I'm going to show you how to adapt a text um, using Board Wizards um, from Unique Learning Systems. It's one of the features that we have with ULS, and I'm going to start by showing you from the homepage of ULS. So you log into Unique Learning Systems. So your home screen should look like this. You come over here to this icon on the left hand side of your screen and you come all the way down to Symbol Sticks Prime. Once you get there, you want to select Board Wizards and that's going to take you to the Board Wizards page. And here you are going to actually click the button on the top that says Custom. And I like to do my stuff in Landscape. And then you're going to name your board. Oh my goodness, I made so many that... Okay, there we go. And the best thing to do is to name your board whatever it's going to be because it is going to save in your Symbol Sticks Prime. Um, for this, you're going to see why that's not super important because there's a lot of screen grabbing involved in this and you don't, you're going to be deleting things off the page. So it's not like super essential that it saves, but that's up to you. If you want to like walk away from it, it'll save your work for you. And it'll be easier to find if you name it the right thing, especially when you get to the point, like as you saw, I had to go all the way up until like 10. I'm pretty sure I have like a thousand boards in there saved. So it's good to just name it what you want to name it. All right. So this is something, a little side note. If you ever want this bar to disappear when you're in unique learning systems, I know it's annoying. You just come over here to the little heart and you click this show class schedule and that bar will disappear. So fun fact, a little Easter egg here. Okay. So now you're in your symbol sticks prime. And what you're going to want to do is find your text. So today I'm going to be continuing. I already started this. So I'm starting kind of in the middle, adapting the Planet Z and the Money Tree book. So let me see where I'm at. I've already started the document. So I like to do it in Google Docs. This is easier for me. You're going to find different ways that this is easier for you. So just like here is how you do it and however you want to use these different skills to complete your adapted text, that's up to you. Like maybe you like to work in Word. I don't know why you'd wanna work in Word instead of Google Drive, because it saves all your stuff, but that's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. Maybe you're a publisher person, I don't know. So anyway, work in whatever means you wanna work, but this is how I do it. So if you don't have a way that you like to already do it, here's a way you can do it. Okay, so I've already started adapting this text. And you'll see here that I have a repeated storyline. Let me come out a little bit so you can see more at once. Oh, actually, this is the Cosmophone. So this is a good one to look at that's already finished. I have my black background for contrast. Um, I have all of the text. I've adapted the text into symbol sticks, and then I've actually screen grabbed it and put it on top of the text that's already in the story. So if you look at the story, here's an example of one of the pages. So it's just like a regular book. It has the text on the page. But what I'm doing is I'm adapting the text in symbol sticks, and then I am just pasting it on top of the text that's already there. All right, so this is what it will look like when you're finished. You're going to have the text covered with the new adapted text, and then you're also probably going to have a repeated storyline. That's a good practice, too. It fills the page, and it's nice for when you're actually reading the story. So this is what it will look like when you're finished. So I'm going to come out of that one. pull up the one that I'm currently working on. All right, so this is Planet Z and the Money Tree. We'll give this time to load a little bit. Keep in mind too that we have these new laptops and the graphics cards on them are like a little bit challenging. Um, they can't always handle all the stuff that we're doing. So like when you're working in Canva, you might see your screen blink black or you might see your screen go completely black. That is just because we're doing things and using programs that are just a little bit too much for these weak little computers. So don't be surprised when that happens. If it happens and you can't get it to turn back on, that's like when you need help. You're going to want to contact IT for that. It's happened to me, um, especially when you're doing like all these recordings of lessons and stuff like that. You're going to see that that's happening. It's just, it's a lot going on for our little computers. So you might see that even happen now when I'm doing this because I'm recording, but I'm also adapting text. So there's a lot going on with the graphics on the computer. So don't be alarmed if you see the screen go blink and black. 
So you'll see here that I've already started adapting this text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to where the next page is, the last one that I adapted. Let's see, all the way down here. All right, so you have a page of unadapted text right here. You can see it's a lot of text. You can't copy the text from this page. That's going to be the case when you're adapting most books. A lot of books you're going to have in hand, like paper books. So you're not going to be able to just like copy and paste this text. So what I like to do for ease, this is just the way I like to do it. You can either type this up and actually type out all of this stuff. So. And you'll see why I do it this way in a second, why I type it in here first and then copy it into symbol sticks. There is a reason, a lot of trial and error that got me to that. And I'll explain that to you when we get to that point. So you can either do that. You can type it, oh, the leaves, I get it. I know what you're thinking, this is really tedious. It is really tedious. Adapting text is super tedious. It takes a lot of time. So next time you see that someone has adapted a text or like a whole novel, um, you can appreciate it because it took them a lot of time to do it. So there is really not a system that just does it for you. A lot of this text is not already adapted. So that's why it's great when we can share the workload and each take a text. And by the end of it, we have a bunch of texts because this is like hours of work. Okay, so you can type it, right? That's one way to do it. Here's how I do it. I, and we're gonna get like a little technical here. So if you don't get how to do this, um, let me know and I will show you how to do it because I can't show you how I'm doing it on my phone. I open my phone. I have the Google Drive app on my phone. I open the document on the Google Drive. So I can actually show you that. Give me one second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Go to my home screen on my phone and I'm going to pull up my Google Drive app. So I'm pulling up the Drive app and then when you pull up the Drive app, usually the last thing that you're working on is the first thing that's shown. So I'm just going to select that document and I'm going to scroll down to where I started writing that text. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm going to double click there so that it will be on here, like when I do my voice to text. So what I'm gonna be doing, it's easier for me. It might not be easier for you. Typing it out might be easier for you. Do that if that's easier. For me, typing it out is not easier. I have really long nails. Um, I make lots of mistakes when I'm typing. So I do a lot of voice to text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to read that text while I'm doing voice to text and it's going to populate into the Google Doc at the same time, let me show you. Okay, so you can see where I am in the document right now with myself. I'm just going to read it. Quote, that's your money tree, exclamation point, quote. Quote, what? Question mark? No, comma, not exactly, but it does grow, comma, quote, James says, period. He bikes a figure eight around the children, period. Quote, when I put my money in a savings account, comma, the bank pays me, exclamation point. That's called interest, dash. It's sweet, exclamation point, quote. Quote, let's go, exclamation point, quote. All right, so if you don't normally do a voice to text, um, that's going to sound really weird to you. If you do voice to text, then you know that you have to say all those things like question mark, period, all that stuff. So if you're really comfortable with voice to text, this is probably the way that you would like to do it. Um, if you're not, it might just add an added layer of something that you need to learn how to do. And in that case, you might just want to type it. But I'm just showing you how I do it. That's how I do it when I do this adapting of the text. All right, so now everything that I said is going to be there on the screen because I voice to texted it into the Google Doc with my phone while I have it up on my computer so I can see it right away. All right, so that is just one way to do it. Like I said, you will find the way that works best for you. That's just the way that works best for me. So now all this text is on the screen that I just said through my voice to text, and you're gonna have to make some edits because I'm sure that if you do voice to text, you know that there are a lot of grammatical errors that can happen. So I just go through and I do a quick once over just to make sure that everything's right. 
the punctuation, the grammar, the spelling. Like for example, it's not gonna know to capitalize money tree because that's a proper noun in the story, but not necessarily outside of the story. It didn't understand the law. So you'll just have to make these little edits, which is why maybe for you, it's easier to type it. For me, it still is not. It still takes more time to type it. All right, so once you've done all that, then you're going to move into adapting on news to you or I'm sorry, on symbol sticks. I call it all news to you. Okay, so the next step is you are going to highlight the text from this page. You're going to control copy. Learn how to do control copy. It'll cut a lot of time off. You just press the CTRL button in the bottom right of your keyboard and C at the same time, and it's gonna copy the text. If you need to do it the difficult way that takes longer, you could just right click on the text and you pr press the copy button, um, but it's so much easier to do control copy. All right, so you're gonna take that text, you're going to come over into this symbol sticks custom board wizard that we opened up earlier. You're going to go to shapes and text. You're going to hover over symbols and text and you're going to click down on your left hand side of your mouse pad and you're going to drag it over to the screen. All right, and that's gonna give you the space um, where you're going to start adapting this text and you're gonna copy the text into here. Here's where it gets even more tedious and a little bit more difficult because this is a challenging program to work with. It's finicky and it doesn't like when you make mistakes. When you make a mistake in here, you are going to have to do a lot of work to fix the mistake that you made, including sometimes having to start a whole new document because things can get stuck. There's a lot of glitches, but this is what we got. So. I'm gonna show you some of those glitches too as we go, I'm sure, because it just happens. But I'm gonna try and show you how to do it right and not make mistakes. So you're gonna click on the text and that's gonna allow you to edit the text and you're going to delete what's already in there. So right now it says symbolize, just delete that. You're gonna do, you're gonna paste this in. So control and then V, control V. That's gonna put all the text and then this is really important, you press the space bar. You need to press the space bar or else it's not gonna populate all of what it thinks are the right symbols for your sentence. It'll take a couple seconds to get all those symbols in there. Um, don't worry if they're weird, you're gonna have to go back and adapt some of them because what happens is it takes it very literally word for word and you have to go back and fix it. Um, just as an example, you can see up here, it's all bunchy. There's a bunch of pictures. You don't need all these pictures, but I don't know what this little purple monster is, but they put him in every time I type O. Maybe his name is O, I don't know, but he comes in every time. So you're going to see um, how this part is the most time consuming of every step of the adapting. So now we're going to adapt this sentence. So you typed up the sentence or voice text of the sentence, you copied it into symbol sticks, and now you're going to have to adapt the text. Um, you can either copy the whole sentence or you can copy parts of it. What I like to do is I just copy the whole sentence in there and then I go through and I copy the end of it, control copy, delete that. I do another one. I put the next sentence in there. And I just do this until it creates the shape that I like, um, that I wanna put on the screen. I will copy that, delete that from there. I need another one. And I just do this until it's in a shape that is appropriate, that fits on the screen. It's a pretty long sentence. It's a long, or not just a sentence, it's a pretty long paragraph in the story. So you might have to do this three, four times, or you might only do it once or twice, depending on how long it is. And it looks like it took me four, so. And there you have that text that you just copied over. 
Okay, so now it looks like this. It's really bunchy, it has way too many symbols. You're going to have to edit pretty much all of this. It can get pretty quick though. Once you're comfortable using symbol sticks, um, it'll go by much much faster, but at first it's gonna take a while. So let's just start with this first one. I don't know what that is. You double click on the picture, you press delete when you want it to go away. Um, I don't really need for the word like to be in there. I'm gonna delete that. I like leaves, I'm gonna keep leaves. I'm gonna delete these because they're hard to see. I don't like to symbol um, a lot of pronouns or things that we would usually use core vocabulary for because I like kids to associate those core vocabulary terms with a core vocabulary picture. So as you can see, pretty much all I kept from this was leaves. Um, so that just goes to show you how much work you really have to put into adapting the text itself. So the next step is to go into the symbols, symbols and images, and you are going to start adding your pictures to your text. So this is going to be kind of up to you. Um, the terminology that you feel like is important. I like to use the fringe vocabulary like leaves because if you think about this sentence, oh, like leaves, I get it. Zara scoops a handful of leaves and grins. If you don't know what leaves are, that's gonna take a lot of the meaning out of this sentence. So it's really important that the reader or the listener um, who's following along as you read understands what leaves are. You don't want them to get tripped up by fringe vocabulary and lose the focus of the sentence, right? So I make sure that leaves is in there. That's one I would definitely put in. I would probably put scoops. I might put handful. I might put grins. Those are ones that really stand out for me as fringe vocabulary that could trip up a reader. So, and that's going to change depending on the level of your reader too. You know, a younger reader might need more visual access to some of these things. They might not need grins, but you never know. And it doesn't hurt as long as it's not too cluttered. Um, my rule of them is I usually try um, to maybe not put in a sentence more than two or three, maybe four at most. You'll, you'll see when it starts to get too cluttered. So all you're going to do is you're going to come down to symbols and you're going to type in the word. So I'm going to put in scoop and just see what happens. Oh, perfect. So you're going to see that this is going to take a little bit of um, you're going to have to discern because you don't want an ice cream scoop. You don't want a scoop chair. You don't want, you know, like an ice scoop. You want the action of scoop. So you have to find the one that's action of scoop. So Zara scoops. You'll notice too that when symbol sticks is automatically doing it for you, a lot of times they'll do something like put an ice cream scoop in there. And that's when you have to notice that, delete that one and replace it with the correct one. So that's why this is a tedious process. I'm also going to put grins in there. Know this too, you're going to see this happen. If you put grin, it comes up with a single grin. If you put grins, it's going to come up, oh, that's not a good example. Um, usually it will come up with a multiple. So that one's good. Yeah, I'll show it to you. Oh, you can see it in leaves. If I want a single leaf, I have to type in leaf. If I want multiple leaves, I have to type in leaves, like that kind of thing. And you'll see that throughout when it's adapting it for you. So grin, and then I'm going to grab the picture, hold down on the left-hand side of my mouse keyboard, and I'm just going to drag it into that spot. The spots are already there. Okay, and there you have it. That's your first adapted sentence, right? The first chunk of that paragraph. I wanna show you something. Remember how I wrote everything in the document, copied it and pasted it over in here, and you see how the sentence looks nice and it has appropriate spacing and it's just, it's good, right? Okay, I'm gonna show you why we do that. Watch what happens when I actually type that sentence in here. So if I started typing it, oh, like leaves, I get. See how there's so much spacing in between each of these? It's because symbol sticks as a program automatically assigns a picture for each thing. When you sign, when you do a copy and paste and you copy in a whole sentence, it does it on more fringe vocabulary. It kind of randomly puts it in there. Not well, but it does it. But if you type in each individual word, every time you space, it cues the program to add a picture. So it leaves these massive spaces in the sentence. And if you're doing tiny little sentences, that's one thing. But when you're doing full text, that's way too big to fit on the sentence. And it's unnecessary because you don't need a picture for each word. That evidence shows that that is not effective. It is more effective to 
put in fringe vocabulary. It's more effective to use pictures to represent things that our kids might not recognize, like a unicorn or a planet, things that they don't hear all the time. They hear I, they hear you. They don't need to know what a picture of Zara looks like. They, sh they need to understand that that's a character. And as a teacher, you might add a doll or something to represent Zara that's more tactile. But these things, they don't need to all have a picture, right? So this is the reason we copy and paste that sentence in, because otherwise, this is what you have to do. We don't want O, we don't want that purple monster. You have to delete the picture, come into the sentence, delete all of the spaces in between those words to make it look like a normal sentence. And you don't want to be doing that. That's a waste of time. So that's why we do the copying and the pasting. So that's just one um, thing that I would recommend you do not do. It really slows down the process. It takes a lot longer to do, if you could imagine that this process would take longer. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the video for a second, and I am going to adapt the rest of this text so you can see the next. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to speed up this section of the video because I want you to see the process and see how long and tedious it actually is, how long it takes to adapt one page of a small children's book. So here we go. All right, so right now, see how I can't get that picture because it's trapped behind two pictures? Here's what I have to do. I have to go into the text, and I have to find the picture that's trapped. It's it, and I have to rewrite it, do a space, delete that, and then I have to come in and manually take out those spaces. That's just one of those glitches I was telling you about, things that are going to take you some extra time that are just annoying, you know? And that's one of them. See, I didn't have a space in there, so now I have to manually go back and take those spaces out. So yeah, those are some of the things that make it tedious. All right, let me come back into my symbols and start filling this in. I like, even though money and tree are close, I like that those are together throughout the story when I'm adapting it. I keep those close, money tree, money tree. So that's something that's almost one picture symbol uh, because it's repeated so much in the story. So I look at this and let's see. And I'm gonna put grow. I like to do verbs when I can. Oh, that's something that's a glitch. I want you to see that too. If you don't get it just right where it needs to go in the picture spot, then it's going to do something like that, and it's going to become a large image. So you have to delete that. You have to highlight it and press delete. It's very important because if you do not press delete and you do the trash can icon up here instead, sometimes it gets permanently stuck on the page, and you have to reset the page. That's one of those, like, weird beta glitch things that I was telling you about. So I've learned not to do that. I'd like you to not have to learn that lesson the same way I did because then you have to pretty much start over on everything you did. All right, so I was looking for grow. Sorry, I got distracted. Okay, and I want to make sure I get it right there in the image spot. There we go. All right. I think I might look up exactly I, I kind of like that. Not exactly. That's like a image that looks like precision. It's like a little bit higher. All right, so I have about four in there. There aren't a lot of French vocabulary words in here, so that's where I'm going to stop. I don't want to clutter the sentence. All right, so here, he. For our kids, that doesn't mean he. The universal core vocabulary image of he is their association of pictures with he. So I would say that it's important if you want to emphasize like the pronouns, if you want to emphasize that more core vocabulary, have your core vocabulary board with you, have your cards ready so that when you get to he, if you want to emphasize on he, you can show them he in, in the form that we're teaching them to communicate it. I'm going to take out that sign version of eight because that's not universal to our kids. I like, I kind of like that visual of around. All right, that's the wrong food. See, that's an example. It sees figure. 
So it puts this image of a person looking at themselves in the mirror and checking themselves out as figure, but that's not what figure means in the sentence. So I'm gonna come in here and see if there is an image for it. And the thing about simple sticks is there usually is. Look at that, fabulous. There's a person literally making a figure eight. What a great visual for a kid to look at and say, he bikes a figure eight. That's a figure eight. That is something that is a fringe vocabulary term that they might not know, and it might stump them up while they're reading. And what a silly thing to get stumped up on, right? I want to put bike to. Not put a bike right there. He bikes a figure eight around the children. I don't want that when in there. It's, it's contextually confusing. Um, there we go. We don't need their my, we don't need their I. You have that in your universal core vocabulary. Now, sometimes I'll keep in because their in looks almost exactly like the universal core vocabulary in. It's not confusing. Um, so that's just up to you. And then I'm gonna put savings. I think that that is a good saving. Let's see what comes up when I do savings. Mm -hmm. I like that. So like, I think this image is a good job of combining savings account. It's a little piggy, it's in a bank, someone's putting money in it. That's a very clear image to me. If you don't think so, then you don't put it in. But for me, that's a clear image. All right. And then the next sentence and the last sentence, the bank pays me. So that's a bank. We don't need me. I, so in this situation, I would love to put pays. I think that'd be a good image to put in. But unfortunately, I think it'd be cl too close to the word bank. So you got to choose. Do you want bank or do you want pays? And I think bank is probably more appropriate. I think the visual of a place where money goes it is more important. And you sometimes you have to make those choices because they're too close. All right. There's another example um, here. It's they're naming it something. It's called interest, but you have a picture of a person who's making a phone call. That's not the right call. You need to make sure that you catch those because that can be really confusing when you're reading. Look, they're sweet. They're not saying it's candy, but there's a little man eating a candy bar. I'm gonna stop pointing those out because at this point you get what I'm talking about. Um, you have to keep an eye out for miss uses of vocabulary is essentially what I'm saying. Okay, bank pays me, that's called interest. Let's see if we can find one for interest. Oh, perfect. Here's what I'll say, um, and this is just what I like to do when I'm adapting text. When I'm adapting text, I like to keep an image consistent, so I'm not gonna use this one sometimes and then the sign language one other times. Next time I use the word interest in a story, it doesn't matter what it is, I'm gonna tr stay true to the image that I use. So you might see multiple images for one word and I just like to stick with one image so that there's no confusion. But that's just me. Um, I don't think we need to do sweet. Let's do, hmm. Let's do sweet, and we're not going to do sweet. We're going to do awesome. Take the word that it actually means. I kind of like that. So if you're a reader and you hear that's called interest, it's sweet. You might be thinking, oh, interest tastes sweet. But what a great thing to have a little image down there that instead of being a chocolate bar, it's a little dude doing thumbs up and he's super excited so that you understand that this is a colloquialism. It's sweet. That might not be something you understood before you read the sentence, but that little guy is going to be the thing that changes that vocabulary term for a kid who might be thinking that we're talking about interest tasting sweet, right? So like that might be just a small thing that you can do to help with vocabulary confusion or like disassociation with the right terms. So anyway, so there you have it. That is an adapted paragraph from one page on that text. So here's what you're going to do to get that from there to the document. You come over here and you're going to click preview. It's up here on the right hand side next to the print button. It's the eyeball preview. And then you're going to see something magical happen. All those little empty boxes like the silhouettes, they're gonna disappear and you have this nice clean piece of text. 
I like to come over here and I like to zoom in so I get my optimal pixels, my best clarity for the thing I'm about to use snippet to copy. Everyone has snippet on their computer. If you're trying to open your snipping tool, you just come over here to your search bar and you type snip and you click snipping tool. If you don't have this, get it. You're going to need it for more than just this. All right, you're going to say new snip and you're going to select this whole pair this whole paragraph and you're going to do it right not like me i just messed it up all right so you're pressing new okay something is happening that's not letting me snip oh i know what's happening i am currently recording and it won't let me snip so give me one second let me snip this i'll be right back Okay, so I took my little cursor and I dragged it until it was covering the text that I wanted, the image that I wanted, and that put it into the snipping tool. You're going to control copy, or if you want, you can press this button up here. That is also the copy button, but learn how to use control copy. It'll make your life easier. Control C for copy, and then you're going to come back into your document. you find where you are all right delete this text because you don't need it anymore you're going to paste it in here the thing you just snipped control v you're going to select the image so you're highlighting the image you're going to click on this right here this makes um, it so your image can move around in front of text then you have a loose image. Then you're going to bring this up here. And you're going to make it fit however you can. And yeah, it's not going to be perfect. And the most important thing is for it to cover all the words. Um, the least important thing is for you to worry about covering up little things in the image because it's more important for you to get that text on there and then to worry about that. All right, so that's what it looks like. There you go, you have an adapted page. There's one more step. If you're working in a Google Doc, it is kind of a formatting nightmare with pictures. So I like to do one little extra step so that you don't run into any hiccups later when you're adding more pictures and pictures shift and they get funky, right? So I put this on usually not 75. I usually do like 60 just so I can get it as big as possible. See, it already did it. It already messed it up a little bit. Give me a second. All right, so you have this, you're gonna zoom in so that you can get the best image. You're gonna pull up your snipping tool and you're gonna snip it again. And that's gonna make both of them one image it, rather than being two separate images separate from each other, right? So press new and then snip the image, come back to your document, delete this, delete this, And in its place, you're going to paste the thing that you just copied, which is the completed image. And that is how you adapt just one page of text. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to do it, but also to show you how tedious it is so that you don't think that you can adapt a text the night before you need it. It takes a lot of time you will find that other people have other methods of adapting text and I encourage you to try all of them and see which one works best for you. This is the method that works best for me and I have not found anything that is quicker or easier or more accurate. And if you do find something, please let me know because I am always interested in efficiency. So I hope that that helped and let me show you what the final product looks like. So at the end of it, this is actually a different story, but at the end of it, you are going to have something that looks like this. Um, you can use the 
symbol sticks to make your repeated storyline. What I usually do is I'll make a repeated storyline like I can identify. I don't know. What would it be for this story? Let me think. What's the story about? Uh, I no. All right, so I just made it. I need money to buy things that I want and need. That's what this whole story is about, understanding that you need money um, to exchange for things you need and want, right? Um, so this is tedious, right? I should have written it in the other document and pasted it over here, but now I'm going to have to take the spaces out of each of these. And then I'm going to have to go through and delete the pictures. And anyway, you get it. So you make that sentence. You add a little star to the side. Let's just pretend this is the repeated storyline. It's not, but... Let's pretend it is. You get a little star. Your repeated storyline should always have a star. That's good, good practice, and it's consistent. They know when they see the yellow star that it means it's something important, that it's a repeated storyline, it's an eye catcher. Put that star right there, and then you copy that with your snipping tool. Copy it, and then you paste it into your document. All right, and that's how you get a repeated storyline. I'm gonna come back in here. You'll notice that um, the text is done, it's adapted. I added the repeated storyline, but I also changed the background to be black. So for me, it's really important, like with my population, and I don't know your population, it's best practice to use a contrasting background. So I like to just make sure that all my backgrounds are in black. It can't hurt, right? It makes the text pop. So to do that, you just go to one second. File, page setup, and then page color. And then you're going to select black. And that is how you do it. If you have any questions about this, feel free to ask me. Um, and like I said at the beginning, my name is Ms. Bo, and I hope this video was helpful.